1914, Henry Ford had streamlined his assembly line to make the Model T Ford car in 93 minutes. That's not very long. How many minutes did it take to make 25 Model T's? So in order to find out, it is 93 minutes to make one. I want to make 25. How much time is that going to take me? What function am I going to do to figure out how to find out how many minutes it would take me to make 25 of them? Lydia. Right, we're going to multiply 25 times 3. So the first thing we're going to do when we're multiplying is do what? Estimate. Estimate. So we round the 93 to 90, and the 25 rounds to 30. 90 9 times 3 is? No, listen to my question. Listen to the question. 9 times 3 is? 27. 27 times this 10 times this 10. We come up with 2. 2,700, okay? Now, this math today is, a, is very different than what we've been doing and similar to what you learned. I need you to stop putting your book. And similar to what you've learned in third grade. So pencils are down and eyes are up here. Water bottles are down too. If we stack our, our numbers like this, the first thing we're going to do is multiply are 3 times our top number, okay? Now, I can do 3 times 75 in my, I mean, 3 times 25 equals 75 in my head, and I think most of you can too, because we know that 25 is just like quarters. We can multiply it by 3, 3 quarters is 75. However, I'm going to walk you through the steps if you don't remember that 3 times 25 is 75. So 3 times 5 equals, I want you to think, what does it equal? 15. So I'm going to put the 5 down here because we're multiplying 1's. My answer only gets to have a 1's answer. What am I going to do with that 1 now? Raise a quiet hand if you can tell me where I should put that 1. Yes. Sophia. We're going to regroup it into the 10's place. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply the 3 times the 10's place. It's 3 times 20, really, right? But 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And that's going to go in the in the tens place. Am I done? No. no. Of course not. We have more steps. That would be too easy, right? So now I have the 75. Here's where it gets kind of tricky. How many of you have remember doing two digits times two digits in third grade? Okay. What did we usually do next? Who can tell me what we use? What, what did we call it, or what did your teacher call it when you did the next step? Andy. Multiply the tens. We multiply the tens, but there was something else that we did here first, usually. Can anybody remember? Ah, see, because you guys don't remember. Your teacher's telling you to put a zero place marker. You guys remember something like that? Okay, good. Because we're not doing that. We're going to multiply the we're going to multiply the tens. Which number is in the tens place on this um, ninety three? Which number class is in the tens place? Nine. Nine and that nine. What is the value of that 9? Nine? 90. 90. So when we multiply, we're going to multiply by 90. What is 90 times 5? Think for a moment. Don't just yell it out. No. That's where the think. Don't yell it out. Okay, what is 9 times 5? 450. 450. Now, I'm multiplying by something in the tens place. My answer can only go to the tens place. I can't put 450 there. Where am I going to put that 4? Raise a quiet hand if you can tell me where that 4 needs to go. Ronnie. We're going to regroup it up here for the next part of our multiplication. Okay? Now I'm going to do 9 times. I've already done 90, and I've put myself in the in the... I put myself over to the hundreds place already now in my multiplication. I don't have to multiply by 90 this time. So 9 times 2 is 18. 18 plus 4 more, 22. 22. So I have 2,250. And now I'm going to add those two numbers. 5 plus 0 is 5. 7 plus 5 is 
12. Regroup the one. Two plus one is? Three. And two and nothing is just two. Okay? So, I will answer your question in just a second. So, 93 times 25 is 2,325. Since that number, 2325, is close to the estimate of, what was our estimate? 2,000. It's close enough. <coughs> then the answer is reasonable. Okay, did you have a question? What's your question? Right here, how did I get the 22? I did 9 times 2, which was 18, and added this 4 on top of it. So 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And then I put the 22 there. How many of you had that same question? Do you guys understand now what I did? So you multiply the 9 times the 2. It's very similar to what you did when you were regrouping with just a one-digit number. Because remember when we were up here and we said 3 times 5? I want you paying attention. Looking. When we did 3 times 5 and we put the 5 here, we regrouped the 1. Remember when we multiply 3 times six, 2 is 6? We add that 1 after and got 7. So it's very similar to what you did when you were multiplying by one digit, only now you're doing it on the other side and doing the same thing. So 9 times 2, which was 18, plus 4, four more would make it 22. Question? Is it a question? It's sort of. Okay, hold on. If it's a question, I'll take it. Okay. So this is sort of like yesterday's and different lessons sort of mixed. It is very much like different lessons mixed up together. Yes, Malia. Um, is it like um, with like It's not opposite. Yesterday we would multiply these numbers first, the left side, but we didn't have to do it that way. Remember I said you can multiply them in any order? So today's multiplication, you do have to do the ones first, multiply by the ones first, and then multiply by the nines. But actually, if you, now that I said that, if you multiply by the tens first, you would still end up with the same answer. So it doesn't, ultimately it doesn't matter when we're doing it this way. As long as you remember when you're multiplying by the tens and you start multiplying, you're multiplying by 90 and not 9. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes? Um, on, in this side, well, on the, when you look at the answer, 2,000, oh. This one? Like the one on the bottom. This one? 2,325? Yeah. So, is supposed to Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, we're multiplying numbers, and so even though it's still about 400 off, our number's in the thousands, so 400 difference is not that much difference. When we were looking at the homework assignments, remember we had someone had, um, someone was saying their answer was like 300 and something, but the actual answer was 1,600? That's a big difference. Because you can't have your, est your estimate be in the thousands and your answer really just be in the 300s. So a difference of about 400 is, is not as bad when you're looking at thousands. A difference he like this would be, would be a big difference. Okay? Yes? So like, you know, so 1,600 is not a good answer for 300. Right. Um, so what if it's your... That's still, if it's still, if you had 1,600 and 900, your actual was 900 and your estimate was 1,600, that would still be pretty off. Either way, it would still be pretty off. Those are still pretty, pretty far from each other. Because you're looking at, it's almost a whole half of a difference because half of 1,600 is 800. And 900 would be almost half of the difference. So that would not be a good estimate. Okay, those of you, I hope you guys are listening to the questions because they're all good questions. Does anybody else have a question before we move on to the next one? All right, go ahead and take a minute and write in your numbers. You can use all kinds of different ways to multiply. We just did the regrouping method. We've done the model method, right, like this. We've done the model method. We um, have done the partial product method, which is what we did yesterday where we would do 
if our number was 67 times 43, this is what we did with our homework, we would do 60 times 40, 60 times 3, 40 times 7, and 7 times 3. That's called the partial product way. So we have a model partial product, um, I'm just like getting a quick product. We have, um, we just did regrouping, right? So none of the, estimating doesn't give you um, actual answers though. We're talking about actual, how we get actual answers. Um, so we've already done those. The next method we've actually already done. I just want to remind you, we're going to remind you. Did you have a question? We're not writing right now, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so if you have a number like 67 times 40, have we seen this before? Do you guys remember this, how we yes. did this before? Who thinks they have a strategy to do this from even before? I think it was maybe my last chapter. I'm not even sure it was this chapter. Who remembers a strategy that we can use to do that? Yes. Addition? Regrouping? We can do regrouping, but we just did regrouping a second ago. I, I'm thinking of a different strategy. So you, um, take the zeros out, and then we have the... Um, so do like 67 times 4? Yeah. And then put the zero back in? Okay, but those are trick. That's a trick. That's not a method I taught you, because that's a trick. Yes? Addition. Addition. And what do you mean by addition? Exactly. Expanded form. Remember, I can do 40 times 60 plus 7. Are you guys, does that looking familiar to you? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I have 40. I can multiply it by the 60 and by the 7 and then add those two numbers. So they've done that for you here. 60 times 40, that would be these two, remember? 60 times 40 plus 60 times 7. Say, ah, oh, this is coming back to me, right? It better be coming back to me. Okay. So they've done it out for you on their little line paper here. Don't hold it right now. 60 times 40 is 2,400. 7 times 40 is 280. And then they add them. It's just like we've been doing already. It's just reminding you that that's another way to... Multiply two-digit numbers that end in a zero. Okay? So don't forget, if you see that number that doesn't have any ones in it, you can do an addition method as well. So we have model, partial product regrouping, and sometimes we could do the addition, which comes from expanded form. Yes? We could do subtraction if we wanted. We can do, how would you do subtraction? 40 times... Correct. 70 minus 3 would also give us the same answer. So we could do addition or subtraction if we're comfortable. Remember, I know some of you are not comfortable with the subtraction. That's okay. Yes. Halving and doubling. We can do halving and doubling if the number is friendly for that. This, is, this would not work for halving and doubling. But yes, we can absolutely do halving and doubling. Friendly numbers like 25, right? 25 is a friendly number. Yes. We just said that one. Well, the problem is if you did halving of 40, you would end up with 20, and you still have to do 20 times 67. Do you know 2 times 67 in your head? No. Not, I mean, I could figure it out, but it would take a lot of work. It would be easier to just do it this way. So um, while that would work, it's not, it's not the easiest, the best way to go. All right. What method did Sean use to solve this problem? So we just went over it up here. Which, which one of these methods was it? Raise your hand when you know. I put all the methods there. Raise your hand when you know which one of these methods did Sean use in his math here. Just one, two, three people know? Uh, okay, what method did he use? Addition. Not, addi not partial product. He used addition. He did 40 times 60 plus 7. And then he did six, 
60 times 40 plus 7 times 40. Again, so this we did this before. Okay, so we for addition here, you can put addition. What I would like for you to do right now is to write down all of these methods, model, partial products, regrouping, addition, subtraction, and then write down number one that they did addition. Go ahead and do that right now. Um, we did number two a second ago. Um, it was regrouping was the method that she used. Look at the problem. Complete the sentences. So we're looking back at this problem. Oh, I'm sorry, this problem over here. Multiply blank and blank to get zero. How did they get zero? Raise your hand when you can tell me. How did this person get zero by multiplying what two numbers? Angelie, what do you think? Seven and zero. Zero and seven. Go ahead and write that in real quick. Multiply blank and blank to get 1,620. What numbers did they multiply to get 1,620? Sophia. Um, 60 and 20. 60 and not 20, but 27. Seven. 